Assalamu alaikum. My name is Anya Abustana and I am a licensed middle school and high school teacher here in Minnesota. So I first heard about Yaqeen Institute when they first launched um, in 2017. And I, I didn't read any of the articles, actually, until one of my friends had posted one. Um, I clicked on it because the title was super, super intriguing. And my first thought seeing the article was, I wish more people talked about these topics. And that's kind of what led me to, to explore the website and to see what other topics were being covered in their publications. So I, I teach high school right now, and um, the, the class that I teach is called Therapy and Leadership. There's no curriculum, and the students in that class, very small number of students, mostly girls actually. Well, they're all girls. And um, when I first began teaching, the administration told me, you know, we have no curriculum, so ask the girls what they want to study. And my first thought was, you know, okay, I'll, I'll do that, but most of the time kids don't really know what they need until you get to know them very well. And if they do know what they need, they won't confide in any adult right away. And so I, I spent the first quarter of the school year just getting to know who they are and um, doing discussions and, um, and Socratic seminars and really trying to understand who my population is that I'm dealing with, these, these young Muslim girls and what do they need from Muslim adults that are generations older than them. And so what I did was, um, I used the first quarter as a test run, and then the, the second, third, and fourth quarter, I began to, to, to really delve into topics that were kind of controversial in Islam, but I knew that that's what these girls needed. And when I would ask them, you know, what are the topics that are, are pressing in your minds every single day, the topics that they would bring up always revolved around gender in Islam and, and equality and injustice. And all of this uh, revealed to me one thing, which is that um, my, my students, and I think this goes across the board for most of the Muslim youth in our country, is that their understanding of Islam and why they're Muslim is at a very surface level. Um, not because they're unintelligent. I mean, I, I teach some of the most brilliant minds in the school but they have a, a shallow interpretation of Islam because that's what's being taught in schools. That's what's being handed down from parents. That's what's being reinforced by um, interactions with other Muslims. And so what I wanted to do was give them a culminating, uh, a culminating unit that would help them explore the phenomenon of doubt in a very healthy and safe way, where they could ask me questions and they won't be judged. They could talk about their friends that are struggling, and they, they can understand that that we have solutions and no judgment. Um, so I, I called this unit um, Conviction and Doubt in the American Muslim Faith. And the entire unit was anchored on two dominant texts from Yaqeen Institute on the topic of doubt, written by the researcher uh, Yusuf Shahud. And I had them read the articles and, and understand not just what the articles are saying, but why the research was taking place to begin with. What makes the crises that we face today different than what young American or young Muslims faced, you know, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 300 years ago, whatever, like take it back to the past. I want them to understand that there's been a shift in American culture and, and the global trends altogether, and that all of what's happening in our world is affecting how Muslims perceive their Iman and perceive their Islam. So I wanted my students to understand, um, to understand their world in light of this research. I had them read the articles first and um, go back home and, and write some journal entries. And they brought those entries back. And within those entries, they were confiding in me that they each knew at least one person, at least one person, within their immediate circle of family and friends that was struggling with their iman. Maybe they had questions that were overwhelming and they couldn't knock those questions off. Um, maybe they had personal trauma, you know, maybe they were, they were very gross in the sciences and the, the topic of atheism was overpowering. And so whatever the issue was, um, they brought their stories into class and we, do, we discussed this and we tried to understand why is it that all of us know at least one person who is on the cusp of leaving their iman, of abandoning Islam altogether. So what I had them do was replicate the entire study amongst the Minnesota Muslim community, which was just awesome because I had you know my, my handful of, of students sitting down 
um, printing out like you know 50 surveys and going out to masajid to, to youth programs um, in fact you know the hallways in class and just pass out these studies uh, these surveys and bring them back and then we had a, a massive pool of data just sitting there and then I told them this data is not enough what I need you guys to do now is to to seek people that are working with youth on a day-to-day -day basis and have extensive interactions with youth and ask them if what you see in your data, the trends that you're, that you're graphing out, if this is actually representative, representative of the Minnesota Muslim community. And so they, they you know, were speaking with imams, with Islamic studies teachers, they were interviewing um, like youth mentors, and it was amazing to see just how all of this made them appreciate that Islam is not the problem when it comes to doubt. You know, it's when, when Muslims are going through these crises, when youth are coming and they stop praying completely and they take off their hijab and they, they begin to cut off any association with Muslims, it's not because Islam is inherently flawed, which is sometimes the impression that youth get is if all of my friends are having these issues with Muslims, then maybe my religion is a problem. But what they found from all of their extensive research is that it's not Islam, that a lot of it is our understanding of Islam is falling short of what the Prophet used to preach, what Islam truly is. So what I saw from them, you know, just working with the data and, and studying these interviews, was this like, this rebirth in confidence that was being withered away by peer pressure, by social media, by personal traumas, by by even looking at the Muslim state in the whole, you know, the entire globe, the Muslims are seen as the inferior nation in the world. Every Muslim country that we see is either war-torn, impoverished, um, struggling in some capacity. And to see my students have their faith restored again in this deen that is a, a blessing to mankind was truly one of the best gifts as a teacher. So this Ramadan, you know, we're all scrambling in our homes trying to figure out, you know, where to invest our time and our resources and where to invest our money. And there's so many causes out there, but I just want to let you know that what Yaqeen is doing right now is they're, they're building a database of publications that is going to strengthen and fortify minds and, and strengthen hearts for generations to come. And their work is so critical because the Mus Muslim youth are truly hurting. They won't always show it, but have any conversation with them, and you can see that they're, they're battling doubts, they're battling questions that our generation and beyond never actually faced. So as you're trying to figure out where to put your time and money this Ramadan, I ask that you put Yaqeen Institute at the top of your list, inshallah, and make dua for them and the work that they're doing, because truly they are a light for us in this time of darkness. May Allah bless them, bless their work, and continue their efforts with full barakah. Amen.